So let's suppose we have a beaker and in that beaker we have a mixture of a single type of enzyme. And now we begin to add the substrate that the enzyme actually catalyzes. What will begin to take place? Well initially, this is the reaction that we're going to see take place. So basically, on the reactant side, we have the enzyme by itself, we have the substrate by itself, and then a reaction takes place that has a rate constant of K1, and this reaction basically is the reaction in which the substrate actually goes on and binds onto the active side of that enzyme to form the intermediate molecule, the enzyme substrate complex. Now, once we form the enzyme substrate complex, one of two things can take place. Either that substrate can actually dissociate from the active side before it is actually transformed into that product, and this reaction simply means we dissociate the complex back into the enzyme and the substrate. And the rate constant for this backward reaction is given by K-1. But the other thing that can take place, and this is ultimately what we want to study in this lecture, is this reaction here. And in this reaction, that enzyme, when the substrate is inside the active side, the enzyme will catalyze the transformation of the substrate into the product, and we form our product, and the product dissociates from the active side. And the rate constant of this reaction is given by K2. Now, let's focus on just this reaction here. So in this reaction, we essentially have a certain rate law. And the rate law, the expression that describes the rate at which this reaction takes place is given by this equation here. So the V0, the rate at which the enzyme catalyzes this reaction, is equal to the product of the rate constant K2 and the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex ES. So this is the equation that describes the rate at some concentration of ES. Now, what exactly is the equation that gives us the maximum velocity, the maximum rate Vmax of that particular enzyme? Well, to find what the maximum rate is Vmax, we have to basically assume that all the enzymes, all the initial enzymes that we began with, contain all the active sites that are completely filled with the substrate. So when all the active sites are occupied by the substrate, what that basically means is the enzyme substrate complex concentration ES is equal to the initial total concentration of that enzyme. So to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose initially inside our beaker, before we added the substrate, we contained three of these identical enzymes. So we have the red enzymes and we have the active side. So the total concentration is three. Now, once we add, let's say, three blue substrate molecules into the mixture, those molecules will bind onto the active side. And once all the active sides are completely filled, this is when the enzyme mixture is operating at a maximum velocity, at a maximum rate. And in this moment in time, the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex, which is this here, is equal to the initial total concentration of that enzyme. So 3 is equal to 3. So we can basically transform this equation to give us the maximum velocity, the maximum rate of that enzyme mixture simply by replacing the enzyme substrate concentration with the E total concentration. And this is given by this equation here. So once again, when all the active sites are filled, the reaction is said to be operating at a maximum velocity, at a maximum rate given by Vmax. And we can simply transform this equation into this equation by changing this concentration to the total enzyme concentration. And what this basically is telling us is all the active sites on all the enzymes are filled with that substrate molecule and therefore we are at a maximum operating rate. Now, 
how exactly can we actually physiologically interpret the Vmax value? Well, the Vmax, the maximum rate of the enzyme, describes the highest number of substrate molecules that can be transformed into product molecules over a given time period when all the active sites are saturated or occupied with that substrate. That is the meaning of Vmax. Now, if we take the following equation and we solve for the rate constant of this reaction K2, we get the following equation. So K2, the rate constant of this reaction here, is equal to V max divided by E total. And this has an important physiological meaning. This K2 is also known as K cat, and this is given the name of the turnover number of the enzyme. So what exactly is the physiological meaning of the turnover number K2 of an enzyme? Well, the turnover number tells us the maximum number of the substrate molecules that are transformed into the product molecules by a single active site per given unit of time. So basically, let's suppose we have a single particular type of enzyme that we're studying, and this is our enzyme. It could be any type of enzyme found inside our body. So the enzyme, it's active side. So these are the substrate molecules and these are the product molecules. What the turnover value tells us, what the turnover number tells us is the total number of substrate molecules that can be transformed into the product molecules per unit time, for example, per second, when only a single active site, a single enzyme, is actually being used. Now, to demonstrate how this actually works and how we can calculate the K2 value, let's take a look at the following hypothetical example. So, let's suppose we have the beaker. Inside that beaker, we have a mixture of some particular type of enzyme. And the concentration, E total, of that enzyme inside the mixture is given to us to be 0.1 molar. Now, let's suppose that experimentally we calculate the Vmax value of that particular enzyme to be 60,000 molar per second. So, at this concentration, when all the active sites of that enzyme mixture are filled with the substrate, we know that the maximum rate of the reaction is 60,000 molar every single second. So, what that basically means is 60,000 of the substrate molecules are transformed into product every single second when all the active sites are actually occupied, are actually saturated with that substrate. This is what six, uh, 60,000 molar per second actually tells us. So to calculate K2, also known as K cat, the turnover number, we simply take the Vmax, so 60,000 molar per second, and we divide it by the total number of enzymes that we have inside our mixture. And what we ultimately get is 600,000 seconds to the negative one. And what this describes is, it tells us that a single enzyme and its single active site can basically transform 600,000 substrate molecules into 600,000 product molecules every single second. And this is, actually, this is actually a description of a specific type of enzyme, one of the quickest enzymes found in our body, carbonic anhydrase. So remember, carbonic anhydrase is that enzyme found inside the red blood cells, which essentially allows us to actually transform the nonpolar carbon dioxide molecule into the polar bicarbonate ion. And that's how we can store the carbon dioxide inside our blood and, transfor and transport it from the cells and tissues and to the lungs uh, in our body. So carbonic anhydrase has this 
turnover number. It is able to actually use a single active site, a single enzyme, a single carbonic anhydrase can transform this many uh, substrate molecules, CO2 molecules into the product bicarbonate every single second. And this makes sense because our tissues and cells produce a very, very, very large number of CO2 molecules. And so to effectively get rid of all those CO2 molecules, our body has to have a very effective and a, and a very efficient enzyme. Now, to compare carbonic anhydrate to another enzyme, let's, for example, talk about DNA polymerase 1. Now, DNA polymerase 1 has a turnover number of about 15. And so what that means is only 15 of the substrate molecules are transformed into the product molecules by DNA polymerase 1 every single second. So now the fact that carbonic anhydrase has a much higher rate than DNA polymerase 1 makes sense because DNA polymerase 1 is actually used in a very important process where we cannot make any, any mistakes because DNA polymerase 1 is used to replicate DNA molecules and that's a very important process. So DNA polymerase 1 has to be very careful in how it actually catalyzes that particular reaction. And so uh, logically, it makes sense that DNA polymerase 1 has a lower turnover rate than carbonic anhydrase because all carbonic anhydrase has to do is take all those CO2 molecules produced by all the cells in our body and transform it into a bicarbonate molecule so that we can actually store and dissolve that bicarbonate, the CO2 molecule, in our blood. Now, the final thing that I'd like to discuss is what we get if we take the reciprocal of the turnover number. So it turns out that if we take the K2 value and we simply take the reciprocate, so we take one divided by K cat, what that gives us is the time period that it takes a single active site of a single enzyme to actually transform a single substrate molecule into a single product. So taking the reciprocal of the turnover number gives us the time it takes to transform one substrate into one product. And so if we, if we use this example, for instance, we get 1 divided by 600,000 seconds to negative 1, and we see that the units are seconds because this comes on top. So what this means is 1.67 times 10 to negative 6 of a second is the time it takes for this enzyme, in this particular case, it was carbonic anhydrase, to basically transform a single substrate molecule into a single product. So the turnover number and the Vmax are very important indicators of how enzymes actually act on uh, some particular uh, reaction. So these values can be used to describe how the rate of the enzyme or how the enzyme actually affects the rate of that particular reaction.